Today I'm going to look at editing the configuration file on the 808 keychain camera that you see here. This particular one is the 80816 camera with the D wide angle lens and it's the version 2 with the TV out. I'll be doing a full review of this camera soon so watch this channel. So what we're going to do today is access the configuration file. I'll show you how to make the edit and how to rewrite it to the camera. So first of all, you plug in your USB lead, press and hold the power button until the red light lights up, and then we'll just pop over to the computer screen, open up the folder and you'll see that the memory card in there is currently empty. I will just mention at this point I'm going to go through the whole process using just the camera. You can actually use a card reader for some of these steps once you've written the, the config file uh, to the memory card. You can use a card reader to transfer it to the computer and to transfer it back to the memory card if you wish to do so. I find it's just as easy to do it this way. So we'll just close that off and back to the camera. Unplug the camera to get the config file onto the card, press and hold the shutter button, press and hold the power button until the light lights up, let go of the power button, but keep the shutter button pressed until you see the three flashes of the red power light and the yellow light switches off. At this point, plug the camera back in, press and hold the power button, and we'll go back to the computer screen. open up the file and you'll now see in there a sysconfig.txt file. So we're going to go right ahead and copy this from here, so right click and copy or cut, either way doesn't really matter, and we're going to paste it onto the desktop for example, or a, a folder of your choice. Okay, we'll now go into the editing procedure of the text file and then at the end of that I'll go through the procedure to write it back onto the camera. You've followed the tutorial so far, you've transferred your configuration file from your camera onto your memory card and you've copied that onto your computer. Now before you make any edits or changes to that take a copy of that file by right click and copy and then paste that copy into another folder where you can save that as a backup should anything go horribly wrong. That way you've got a copy of all your original settings and you're not going to be desperately hunting for something all over the web to try and download an original configuration file. So if you just create yourself a new folder for example and then if you paste that file into there right click and rename the file and then just rename that dot old. Click yes to the warning, that's basically just saying that uh, some things may not recognize it etc. You know, the, you know the drill if you've used Windows before. And that file will stay there as a backup should anything go horribly wrong during the edit. But we'll just go right ahead now and edit the, uh, the configuration file. So having copied the file from your camera device onto your computer, you need to locate the file, the title of which is syscfg.txt, systemconfig.txt. It's a simple text file and it's very straightforward to edit, as already explained. So if you right click and open with Notepad, and or any simple um, any simple text editor, uh, WordPad, Notepad, or anything along those lines, and what you'll see is something like this. Now, this consists of individual lines of information. The area in the square brackets is the details that actually writes to the memory of your camera. The rest of it is for your own information so that you know what you're editing. So for example here you have the date and it's in the format 2012 26 26th of the 9th 2012 followed by the time hours minutes seconds and it's this section within the brackets that you edit to reflect the data back onto the camera once it writes back to the camera. One thing to bear in mind with the date and time is the time that you set on here is the time that will set on the camera once the file writes back to it. So if you're, ed if you're editing this at uh, say half past the hour but by the time you're done editing it's going to be quarter two 
then you need to make sure that the, the time is the last thing that you edit on here before you write the file back to give you the most accurate time if that's important to you. But we'll just work from the top down. So initially we've got the date and time in the format just outlined there. Um, and you change that according to the current date and time. Directly below that we have the movie resolution and the editable area is in the little brackets here currently at zero. You have a choice of zero, 720p, 30 frames per second, one WVGA 30 frames per second and two VGA 30 frames per second. I can't imagine why you'd want any of the lower resolutions but you just either put a number one or a number two within those brackets if you wish to do so. Uh, below this we have movie cycle time. You have a choice between 5 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes and 70 minutes by putting the appropriate number from a 0 to a 3 within the bracketed area just there. Um, the 5 minute one would be useful if you're using this as an in-car camera. This would record in 5 minute segments and as you know it works on a loop format when you use as a car camera so that when you reach the end of the memory card and it's full it deletes the oldest file and starts rewriting the oldest one. So of course if you set 40 minute segments you'll lose an entire 40 minute segment when it loops back round. Uh, below this you have movie loop recording, an option essentially of on or off by setting a 0 or a 1 inside the bracketed area just here. And again you'd need to set this to loop recording if you're using this as an in-car cam so it would continuously record. Uh, you would of course need to be powered through the USB uh, connector as well because the battery wouldn't last more than 40 minutes. Um, here you have the movie stamp which is uh, showing the date and time on your screen which shows in the lower left as you will see on my review once that gets uploaded uh, you have an option of on or off zero or one you have the movie sound which is the default recording level and you have a choice of mute zero or level one level two and level three one two and three respectively set in here default is two and that seems to work quite well but you can play around with that the LED now this is something that's new with the um, with the 16 I think it's I don't know if it's just the version 2 or, the, or all of the 16 cameras but you can set the LED to flicker once a second when it's recording now this I find is very useful because unless you're using this camera for covert reasons it's handy to know that it is actually recording as uh, with the default setting the LED goes off and frankly it's possible that uh, the battery could have died and you wouldn't have had a clue until you go to download your videos from there and below this you have the movie quality and this is a configurable data rate 0 is 10 megabytes per second, 1 is 7 megabytes per second I've tried both and frankly I can't see any difference uh, but you can try the higher data rate and see if that works for you uh, power off you have an auto power off feature and you can choose between um, 0 is off uh, 1 is 30 seconds, 2 is 1 minute and 3 is 2 minutes. Uh, you can't switch it off so you have to choose between one of, the, one of the above but frankly the 30 second one which is default works well for me and the camera switches on so quickly it's really not a problem. Movie flip, now this is useful if you're mounting the camera upside down in a vehicle or on a radio controlled aircraft or anything along those lines this saves you having to flip the movie in a video editor and basically um, just, just flips the movie 180 degrees so if you're mounting the camera upside down the video will, will film the right way up um, once this is set it's set until you alter the configuration file again so you can't change it on the go and then below this you have the TV out which of course is a feature of the 16 uh, 80816 camera version 2 and you can set that to on or off and um, obviously you when you see the review you'll see the TV out cables that come with the camera the capture size below that is in relation to the photo uh, the photo facility and you have two options 1280 by 960 or 1280 by 720 this is a useful one to select if you want to capture still images to interlace with a video when you edit it later so you can set that to number one 1280 by 720 and you don't need to do any cropping. The auto record facility um, set the movie auto record to off or on. To be quite honest I'm not entirely sure what that does at the moment it's something I've not messed about with. And then below this in your fancy brackets 
you have the current firmware that's installed, this one being version 0.36 which is the most current stable up-to-date firmware. If you look at the RC Group's forum you'll be able to see any relevant uh, updates to the firmware on there and instructions on how to update your firmware for your camera. OK, so that's your file edited. Now we need to write it back to the camera to make the changes in the camera for the next time that you use it. So we plug the camera back in into transfer mode by pressing the power button until the red light lights up. We go back to the computer screen and open the folder and you'll see that the folder is empty. So from the desktop We'll right click and copy the system config file and right click and paste it onto your memory card in there. Once that's copied you can close that down. Unplug your camera which switches off and to write it back to the camera to make the changes you use exactly the same procedure as you did to write the file onto the memory card in the first place. Press and hold the shutter button, press the power button until the light lights up and let go but keep hold of the shutter button. Keep hold of that until you see the three red lights flash and the yellow light extinguishes. And at this point the new configuration file has written to the camera and the, old con the configuration file from the memory card has automatically been deleted as we'll be able to see if we plug that back in into transfer mode and I will just demonstrate as we flick back to the computer screen open up the folder and you'll see that once again the memory card is empty. This means the configuration has been written successfully to the camera it's deleted it from the memory card and you're ready to go I hope this has been useful and thank you for watching. Uh, keep a check on my videos, I will be doing a full review of this camera soon.